Hello and welcome to Off Track, powered by Rich Energy. I'm your host, Dave Neal, and the final of our chats from the Isle of Man TT. Who better to join us than Radio TT commentator Steve Day? Steve, welcome back, mate. Hello, mate. How is it? I just suddenly realised that after goodness knows how many podcasts we've done, that this is the first one we've done face-to-face in the same room. No, it is, yeah, because we've done them over Zoom yeah. previously, haven't we? Yeah. So we are, we are actually tangible and, uh, yeah, and uh, next yeah. to each other. Yeah. And your aftershave is incredible. Oh, thank you. I'm actually downwind from here. And it, it's not, what is it? it that, sounds, that, that smells expensive. It's called horn for men, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see the packaging for that one. <laughs> I don't actually know what it is. <laughs> and mate, how's it been? Welcome to the TT. Mm. Your first experience, your first time working here. How's it been, mate? Yeah, it's been great. I mean, um, it's a bucket list stuff, really, to come to the TT. Um, I've always wanted to come as a spectator. Never imagined I'd be working on it. Obviously, today is a bit of a washout, um, which is why you've obviously decided to drag me in here for your final podcast. Um, but no, I've had a lot of fun. It's been emotional, but it's been great. It's been eye-opening. Nothing like anything I've ever done uh, previously. Uh, a different world, but one that I hope to be back in again this time next year. It would be nice. I think we'd both love to be back next year, mm. whether, whether we come back with the team or I come back as a punter or just come back to ghost you. I don't know. I'll still be here. I've no doubt you'll be back next year. I need someone to carry my tins of hairspray, actually. <laughs> <so that's coming laughs> in. I was going to say carry your bags, but I'll carry the hairspray. That, that quiff doesn't stay there all of its own ah, accord, does go. it? That takes some styling yeah, and some really work. It really does. You, would, you have no idea. <laughs> Mate, but this is the beauty of doing it face-to-face because on a, on a Zoom podcast, you can't really tell what's going on on the other side but if we do it face face, I mean, that's, that's, there's some height there. And we've got the TV cameras with us as well. So now you're on a video pod. That's yours over there. Look. Oh, okay. You, see, you're there. Ever the professional. Yeah, well, I know. That's the yeah. best bit. So tell me about the, the approach to the TT, the build-up to it. I know we spoke briefly, um, maybe it must be six weeks maybe, that we last yeah, had you on the show. So. It's something around there, isn't it? So for the listeners now, as we've moved on, where... What was the preparation time in the week, let's say, leading up to coming over? Um, Obviously, after being offered the job to do the radio commentary, um, I think when we spoke last, we were talking about the build-up to it. The week leading into the the, the two weeks here at the TT, I have to say, from a personal perspective, I was not sleeping that well um, because it's quite a big thing for me to take on, something new. I've done an awful lot of research um, back at home and you're constantly asking yourself, are you ready? Have you done enough? Um, So yeah, I was a bit nervy, not sleeping too well, but you know, positive nerves, if you know what I mean, um, coming into it. Um, So yeah, it was a a very strange week. And also we'd just come off the back of a BSB round at Donington as well. So I didn't really have an awful lot of time to to get my head around it that much, to be honest with you. You didn't have a lot of time to spend with the family before coming over. Um, but yeah, so I, I found it quite unusual. It was such a mammoth thing, such a big, the biggest, one of the biggest jobs I think I've ever accepted. You've got the experienced Chris Boyd alongside you. Yeah. Boydy, one of the most knowledgeable blokes on the island regarding the TT. What, when you sat up in the, in the comms booth for the first time a week last Sunday, Seems an age ago already, yeah, doesn't it? Does, it? Yeah. yeah, Seems like a long time ago that you sat down there for the first session on the, the, the Sunday afternoon. What was going through your mind? Um, I felt um, quite sick, actually, on the first day that we went in. Not because I was ill, but just through, through nerves. Um, and it was a whirlwind because it's not like anything else I've commentated on before with a new team, uh, with a new co-commentator, trying to get used to how the timing works and just the whole format and then... Obviously, once they got the squeeze and the tap on the shoulder, um, something happened emotionally to me that has never happened before. Uh, and I, I, yeah, I remember going back to the hotel room on that very first night and just almost fell on the floor, just mentally exhausted. Uh, but the positive was I could see already that um, with the, the way it works, obviously, Chris Kinley, Kinners down in pit lane, is brilliant at what he does, so experienced. The same for Chris Boyd. Boyd is a magician with his computer, with his projected times. Um, and I had a great, I've got a great Manx radio team around me as well. And I already knew by the end of day one, 
we're going to go in, in the right direction. So, and that felt really good because you never know when you're commentating how you're going to form a partnership with whoever you're commentating with. It's a bit of a lottery in that sense. So yeah, I was quite relieved, but I was just mentally absolutely exhausted. You've spent many years doing MotoGP commentary alongside Matt Burt and, um, and Nick Harris. You'd started at BSB as well this season. How much does the TT commentary now differ to the TV version? Yeah, well, completely. Um, Preparation-wise, I would say I've done about two months of research. And I'm not just talking about an hour here and an hour there, like non-stop. I, I watched around about 40 or 50 onboard laps of Peter Hickman's senior win in 2018. I came and did a recce with Milky. He gave me a lap of the course in the car. He spent three hours with me and said, I'll treat you like a newcomer. And then, you know, you can pick up. So I filled up a notebook. It didn't make any sense at the end, but filled up a notebook. And yeah, just meticulously went through everything. And then the commentary itself is completely different because other than the same familiar faces in leathers on familiar looking motorcycles. That's kind of where the similarities end. Um, everything's so different. You've got to learn time trial. And also just from a radio perspective, I'm so used to commentating on the pictures that you're already seeing at home. Um, whereas as a radio commentator, you've got to try and paint the picture for the listener. But also you've got, I, I didn't realize this until we started doing it as well, that you've got a responsibility as well because you are, is for an awful lot of people around the paddock and around the course if ever somebody's maybe retired over at Solby Bridge we can give that information to kind of put people's mind at rest so we're trying to get out as much information as possible um, whilst also trying to make it sound entertaining um, and but yeah it, it's just a different situation and I've definitely not nailed it because we've got um, you know, it's my first time doing it. I think there's things that we can do to improve going forward if they have me back. Um, Keep but, adding that caveat, don't <laughs> you? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if you're listening, Paul. Um, but, it's yeah, it's just a completely different world. And I'm not sure whether or not I've got it right or whether I haven't. Um, but I've just come in and kind of done it in my style. Um, and we'll, yeah, we'll see what the what the bosses say. <laughs> so in that respect, how do you feel it's gone? I mean, you, you're going to have some idea. Have you had a chance to be in the moment while you're well, doing it? And you know me, Dave. I am not, um, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of egos. Um, and, and so therefore, I'm, I'm not kind of egotistical in my job. So I'm kind of quite self-critical about what I do anyway. I never, I don't think I've ever walked out of a commentary box and gone, yeah, you've nailed that. This has never happened. But at the same time, you do know if you come out and you think, oh, goodness me, I've made a right hash of that. Um, and luckily, it definitely wasn't the case. And I felt after the first few days, that's gone OK. There's stuff we can improve on. But like I've said to you, I think on many podcasts before, every day is a learning day. We can always get better. I think the day you believe that you're the finished article and you've nailed commentary is the day you might as well just put everything to one side and say, ah, enough's enough. So there's definitely room for improvement, but overall I'm, I'm happy, yeah. Excellent, that's a good start. Yeah. The fact that you're comfortable in what you've done, I think it speaks volumes for the, the fortnight that you've had. Um, how did you get used to the, the commentary of, of people leaving every 10 seconds? You have a little bit of gap to fill between each one running up to the line. And then by the time you get into the mid-pack, the boys are nearly at Glen Helen, so the times are starting to come through from the first it's, checkpoint. It's really difficult. How do you manage that? Well, you've got, to, um, you've got to kind of manage emotions as well because just seeing those guys moving from the grid up towards getting the tap on the shoulder, there's that, you know, we've talked about this before we came on the podcast. Last there's night. This, uh, last night at the yeah, there's this emotion you feel. And I know you've already spoken to Rob Hodson and I know Rob and I spoke to him and he said, it's a tap on the shoulder. I think he said it on this very podcast, but it's more than a tap on the shoulder. And of course it is. And so there's that emotion, but to actually cover it is very difficult. To get out what you want to say in 10 seconds is actually quite tough. And so I definitely have to work on that a little bit more. But as the week's gone on, I've been getting myself ready with what I want to say. You know, 100th TT start for John McGuinness. He's about to go out, 23-time winner. Next up, Dow Kawasaki, Dean Harrison, 2019 senior TT winner. And you've got to, in between, kind of get ready to say, and off he goes. And then you wait for the, you know, the noise and try and paint that picture. So 
it's it's been really really diff difficult to do and also shattering I can't like, by the it. time you've called 22 23 off and then you're kind of looking at the live pictures because we have live pictures to commentate off so we're waiting for them to go through Glen Helen um, it's actually I'm exhausted so by the time I hand over to Boydie it's not because you know Boydie wants to talk it's because I haven't got anything left I need to like, just have a little uh, break for a couple of seconds so have you had a chance to, to enjoy the time in the comms box as well and just sit back in for the experience and knowledge that Boydie's got to just sort of soak that up a little bit? He's, he's been here since nearly since the place was built. So he, yeah. he knows almost everything about it and the rich history that it has. So have you had time to sort of soak that up a little bit? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Yeah. They, they've got great knowledge, uh, great experience. And obviously, Manx Radio, the, the production team that I've got, have been around this industry for a long time. They know listening to Kinners down, you know, on the ground, talking to different people. Um, I've really enjoyed it. And then obviously we've had a couple of really good races. Um, the super sport race in particular uh, between Michael Dunlop and Dean Harrison. That's just sort of natural, the natural passion that you get from the sport. So I don't even remember what I said, but um, that was just, yeah, that was exciting. You know, these guys are switching positions. Tenth by tenth, the super twin race yesterday was looking like That's being crackers. an absolutely awesome finale. But unfortunately, um, it didn't work out for Michael. But even then, there's so much more to enjoy about, you know, the fact that Paul Jordan managed to get on the podium and, you know, he was crying his eyes out. So it's, it's fantastic. So, yeah, I've had a chance to enjoy it whilst I've done it. The, the human side of things is so important for the TT. The, the emotion of it, why... The, the ladies and gentlemen do what they do and have that want and that will to go out and do it. How, how much has it impacted on you this two weeks, that human side of the TT that you don't feel unless you're here? Yeah, that, that's a, it's a good question because before this year, um, I haven't had a chance to actually be here because my other jobs have got in the way. MotoGP often clashes with the TT and even though I know some of these guys and girls that are competing, it's a different vibe here, completely different. Um, I, I love the fact that fans have this ability to walk around freely in the paddock, to get up close and personal. Pretty much every single TT rider, sidecar driver, passenger will you know, speak to you, say hello, sign whatever. I, I can't think of any major sporting event in the world where you can get that access. Um, but from the human perspective as well, you can see the tense atmosphere at times as well, um, because it is a big deal, it's massive. But you cannot, I think I put a tweet out after a couple of days saying, because I'd not been here, and I'd heard loads of people say, oh, you've got to go, then you'll understand. And I've always been at home thinking, oh, all right, okay, yeah. I mean, it's cool watching from TV, but I, I, honestly, I'm not sure what you, what you mean. But I think I put it on Twitter that, being at the TT is, or the Isle of Man TT is a bit like having a kid. People tell you what it's like until you go there. Um, and, and that's exactly and all the, the emotions same. that come Yeah, with it. it's exactly the same thing with the TT. I don't think you can actually, I think you should be banished of all opinions <laughs> <laughs> of the TT and, until you've actually come, you know, come to the island, uh, spoken to the riders and, and had that, that feeling that everyone else has. How has it been around the paddock with the riders and talking to them, getting their little bits of information, taking your notebook out as well? What, is it, has it been different to doing that at BSB? Is there, is there a different kind of feel to, yeah. to doing that here than Hugely. to doing it at BSB? Hugely. I wanted to make a point of going around to as many privateers as I could so that I could get different aspects because obviously it's cost a lot of money for some of these guys and girls to be here. Uh, I wanted to meet new people, but that the, the the same riders who I meet short circuit are, are different here, and so you have to be ready with your notebook that maybe kind of I don't know read the room a little bit. Is this a good time to really actually have a conversation or not? And um, you very much get the feeling that when you're doing it at British Superbike or in MotoGP, it's a job. You know, and you can just ask them anything, but it's like, take down notes, they'll speak, you take down notes, they'll speak, you take down notes. Whereas here, it's, it's just not, it's not like that at all. Um, it's very much, uh, y you have to, you really have to think about what you're asking them as well, because it's, it's a serious thing here. Um, 
So yeah, I found that really, really different. Phrasing of the questions is different yeah, here, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. There's some things that I've said when, when I've been in the company of James Hillier and I've thought about saying that you would ordinarily at any BSB round mm. or if you're at MotoGP talking to guys there, certain phrases, certain questions, you suddenly go, and then you go, I can't ask that. You can't mention the word fear. You can't mention the word scared. N nothing negative. No. Because they're emotions are already at the limit of what they want to do. Some hide it really well. James is very, very intelligent, and all the riders are, to be fair. You can't come here and not be because you need to understand the ability to ride within your limits unless you're on a super sport bike and you're Michael Dunlop and you do a 129.4, which just, as I said to Chris Pritchard earlier, that's just rude to everybody yeah. else. Yeah. I mean, tell, let's go for that before we go to that other question. What, what was that like to commentate on? You could see it all the way through. So you can, you can see more than we can listening on the radio, stood up on pit wall waiting for James to come through or whatever. What, what's your experience of watching the guys out there on the TV and commentating on it at the same time? Uh, excitement. Um, I was really impressed as well. But you, you, you're just amazed at what you see. Um, we had an idea with the data that Boydie had put into his computer that Michael Dunlop was on for a very good lap, but he was still trying to win the race first and foremost. And he just left it all out there. And watching him um, clip the grass at Craig, um, you know, he was not going to come across the line here on Glen Crutchery Road without having put all of it in. And you'd expect nothing less of Michael Dunlop. So. Yeah, that's as excited and as passionate as I think you can get as a commentator when you see stuff like that because it's it's sport. It, but it's a different sport, obviously. But it is that just um, it was just epic. It's you, you're the same as me. You're a dyed in the wool motorcycle racing fan, and you cannot fail to be impressed. It, it, if, if somebody hasn't been so great with you in the paddock or at BSB or somewhere else, you can only wish them the best when they're here. It's such a strange dynamic versus what we're all what we're normally used to. Yeah, it is. It is, and also, funnily enough, I didn't actually. Know, I've never met Michael um, until I came here, and um, I know that media might not be his favourite part of it. And so I had to kind of approach. I think I'd gone over to the awning a couple of times and thought, yeah, this isn't the right moment. I'm not sure there ever is, but they, this isn't the right moment. Um, because I think Michael sometimes gives this portrayal out that he might be unapproachable, but he's not. He's just kind of fearful of that thing, you know, and he doesn't really like the TV and media. He's actually a really, really lovely guy, proper down to earth, um, and everyone's got a lot of time for him. But he's a superstar in his own right. I mean, most, you know, most of the fans here, the, the queues of people when Michael came out to sign hats and programs was just incredible. And there's just this aura around Michael. I don't know why, just I felt it just speaking to him. Um, I can't even repeat to you what he told me because I said I need some notes. I think this is at the end of the practice week. Things weren't going so well. I said I need some notes for radio. and I can't repeat what he said. But I said, okay, a cleaner version, please. He's like, no, this is exactly how it is. That's how uh, I feel. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, uh, yeah. Not, I can't say that on radio, but I can say things aren't going all that well. <laughs> We've but, had better weeks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, to, the emotion is, is different through painting the picture while the boys and girls are out on the course. It, it's something that's a little bit different. MotoGP is, is, is a great spectacle to watch. It's the pinnacle of motorcycle racing. This is the pinnacle of, of road racing. What's been your standout moment up until today? Um, you mean in terms of uh, standout moment of commentary, or um, I think what well, generally, whether, generally, whether it's some tra um, action on track, something that you've seen, something uh, that you felt in commentary. What's your for, standout for me moment? that it, I go back to watching them um, move away from their teams, kiss their loved ones, handshake their team. That moment from there, and they go under the monster energy. Um, whatever it's called, bridge or tower or whatever, I don't it's know, one of those. Minor, yeah. um, and then watching them just sort of move themselves closer to Mark Pendlebury. Um, you remembered his name? Yeah, the yeah, tap we were calling man. him Tapman the, tap the start man. of the week. Um, and yeah, just that. And it's not like a gentle hold on the shoulder either. It's a proper squeeze, which they'll feel. And they all say they do. 
and it's that tap and it's I don't know that 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 emotion that's what's gonna you know stay with me that is like nothing else I've ever experienced that you do not see that in any form of short circuit racing at all um and so that is really even now just thinking about it it's kind of making the hairs on the back of my neck stand up a bit so yeah that feeling that's the closest I can honestly say from um when I used to race short circuit racing back in the UK I always wondered if I'd ever get even close to uh, an emotion of when the lights go out and you're on a grid and you're just going, what the bloody hell am I doing on a grid here? 40 of us about to charge into that first corner because everyone does it. And, um, and I've never ever got anything close to feelings, similar emotions to that. You can't really replicate it. That's as close an emotion that I've felt since then. Um, and so I'll treasure that um, because yeah, it's just it's inexplicable. I can't even properly explain. I don't even know what emotion it is. Genuinely, I don't know whether it's fear. I don't know whether it's excitement. I don't know what it is. I've got no idea. But yeah, it's uh, it's an emotion that will stick with me. So far as, as working with Chris Kinley, who's also been around a, a long, long time on Manx Radio, anybody who listened before when they had the, unit, the post at Glen Helen and they had the post at Ramsey, Chris Kinley was at the grandstand. How much of an influence has he been on you while you've, uh, while you've been on the island? Well, he's great. I mean, I, and I the Manx Radio team as a whole. Yeah, I, I think um, in all forms of commentary, it's always really important um, to get along off air um, because I think that comes off you know, you'll, you hear it in the voices and they've been a great team. You know, we've, we've, we've had a few beers with, with, you know, I've listened to Chris for years and years and years and I've seen him on the TV for BBC Northern Ireland when he's done Northwest. And, um, yeah, his experience has just been unreal. He's helped me a lot. Every single person in this team has bent over backwards to try and help me. The same goes for Paul Phillips and everyone in the office there. Everybody has done everything they can to make me feel welcome, to enable me to do my, my job in the best way I can. Um, and so, yeah, I've got, I've got nothing but um, love for all of them because they're, they're brilliant. I've made some good friends. One thing that, that we need to talk about, not in depth, just on your own feelings, um, one thing unique to the TT are red flag situations. Listening in over the years, you never really get the red flag. You get red flags at BSB. You kind of look out. 99% of the time, they're okay. Or they're at med center, whichever. There might be an oil spill. It could be anything. Contaminated track. Here, the red flag means something completely different. And it has a completely different feel to it. Everything slows down. Everything goes quiet. And everything sort of goes still. How have you had to adapt to those red flag situations? Not anything in particular, no, just the no, red flag okay. situation. Well, uh, from from short circuit racing as a rider, um, I've lost friends. I've had, I've been unfortunate to be in a commentary box when bad things have happened in short circuit racing as well. But like you say, a red flag in short circuit racing, 99 times out of 100, you, you know, you the safety measures are completely different from short circuit perspective um here a red flag it yeah it's uh, until it happened on the f i think earlier in the, the the practice week um yeah that's a that's not a nice feeling um lump in your throat um you're hoping everything's okay really different feeling to anything that you have to deal with it's a roller coaster ride you know it really is um We've had some dark days here at the TT over the last couple of weeks, and it's not been easy to deal with. But, um, you know, having spoken to as many riders and families and teams as I have, I know, you know, and I, I, I'm sure this is something that a lot of riders have said. They do it because they love it. They do it because they're addicted to it. They don't do it because of money. Uh, we'll throw that right out of the window. And they don't do it because they're forced to. And even though the fans obviously get a huge amount from it, they're not necessarily, they're not here to entertain the fans. It's just that what they're doing is really entertaining and, and we love it, but they're all doing it because they love it. They want to do it. And so that, I guess, just makes you feel a little bit more content with some scenarios, but it's very, very difficult to deal with. Um, it never gets any easier. There is no really, there is no right way of dealing with it. 
you've just got to try and certainly from a, our perspective as commentators, we just have to try and make sure that we get the information clear, concise, but it's done in a respectful tone. It's done in a sensitive manner, but then also it's done and delivered in a way that enables you to actually continue. That's not easy. Um, so it's been completely different. Yeah, red flag here gives you um, tingles and not, not good ones. On the flip side of that, which can can you pinpoint something that you've done in commentary or you've seen on the, on the cameras that's giving you goosebumps that you've suddenly just gone? What? But also managing to keep the bit that I I struggle with. If I'm watching something on the TV, and especially I was watching it the other night, the TT coverage, and I'm just transfixed by it because what the guys and girls do, what they do out there, just beggars belief. You ask them how they do it, they go, I don't know, I just do it. You're like, okay, that's, the, but that's the stock answer. And it's the same when we say about the emotion, about how do you feel and you don't, well, you don't, it's just, you've got to experience it. And there's a select band of people that can feel what they do. So while you're watching it, has there been any point that's given you goosebumps and you, you've had to maintain the commentary thing? Because yeah, I, yeah, actually. I the, wonder how difficult the, is the, that when the, you go, you just, you just want to go, ah, oh, but you have to. Are we allowed to picture? swear on here? Is this a family show? No, okay. children. Oh, no, it's children. Right? Oh, there's children. Okay, we won't. Um, Thought I'd best have a quick check. No, so, yeah, no, no. Um, the very first day that they came, because obviously they did the standing start, the very first day of qualifying, when I think it was Dean Harrison came past us on Glen Crutchery, and then I, from the, we've got a very, very good commentary position from where we are. We can see parts of the mountain, and um, we can see them going into uh, St. Ninian's. And just seeing Dean come past, I don't know why in my head, but I almost thought, you're not, you're not actually about to do what I think you're about to do, even though you know. And it's just an incredible thing. I just, that first time he came past and I just watched him disappear into, like, well, houses either side. Yeah. Just, <laughs> I was just like, what? And so, yeah, live on air, I could have probably dropped a howler um, on my first day. So that stands out. Watching Michael Dunlop through uh, the bottom of Bagaro um, was just incredible. Just, you know, that, that compression like, oh. through the bottom. And uh, Hickman through Gorse Lee as well. Um, oh, that's something special. Yeah, to so they, they've, they're bits that have sort of stood out in terms of just like proper speed where I've been like, wow, that's amazing. And then also seeing the emotions of some of the... the the, the sort of new people coming onto the podium as well has been great. So Davy's first podium um, was great and you could see him having a moment to himself. Paul Jordan I'm made up for, um, despite the fact that obviously uh, it was at Michael Dunlop's expense from yesterday in, in terms of what happened to him. Um, the Crow boys in sidecars, you know, that's a, that's a proper story. That's a proper story, you know. Um, Manx boys, son of a legend, second ever TT, and they're, you know, right on the brink of sort of lap record pace and, you know, second overall. Mega. So, yeah, there's loads. I'd probably sit here all night and list out a load that are, that are really good mo uh, treasured moments. I, I kind of like the head on shot through Kirk Michael as they, get, they go from yellow line to yellow line to yellow line. It's just that straight shot as they're coming towards it. It reminds me very much of um, F1 with the swimming pool. Uh, camera where the cars come through and you, you kind of get that experience but you're looking at it through a little village when Milky took me over there uh, before the TT and he, he parked by the way we weren't in anything flash we were in a Toyota Yaris one litre so we won't wow. we won't go in that quick but he pulled over and then That's he showed a higher car yeah, I know. <laughs> he showed me uh, over by Douglas Road Corner and then the, the, the kind of approach into Kirk Michael and it looks very similar to one of the streets that I've got back home and I just suddenly imagined in my head somebody doing, you know, 150 to 200 miles an hour through our streets and thought this can't be possible. And Milky, as ever, was getting very excited as he was explaining to me about his, you know, shred the needle, Steve. We're going to go flat out through here. <laughs> flat out through here. And it was in it a one to Yaris. Yeah. And then, but then you watch it happen and it's just incredible. It is absolutely incredible. I mean, it must, the, what riders feel through there must be such a buzz. Um, yeah, that's it's it's madness in some ways, isn't it? Sometimes you look at it, you just think, goodness me. Um, but the buzz you get from it, at the same time, I'm looking at it thinking, I wouldn't mind having a little go on that. Taking my next question, would you? 
Um, I always said no as a rider in short circuits that I wouldn't, but now I've been here, there's parts of the course, parts that I would you be... You have to do the whole thing. That I would love to. Yeah, I'd love to have a ride round for sure. I'd love to have a ride round. Whether or not I could do, take that next... I don't know. It's impossible because everyone that's started it, has, they've all got the bug, you know, so maybe that's it. You know, you, you start and then it's like, well, this, there's nothing like it because there will be, there is absolutely no shadow of a doubt, there will be nothing like doing a lap here. There is nothing in life that is going to compare even remotely to doing a lap of the TT course. So, um, yeah, the, the, the sort of the racer in me um, says, yeah, but then I stopped racing a long time ago. And so my sensible head now says, nah. Those that can do, those that don't, yeah, commentate exactly. on it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. is kind of the next best thing, isn't it? You get to live it. You get to live every moment that the riders well, are. Well, you get paid, which is a bonus. Which is always because, a yeah, bonus. You know, you it's always nice to... You, you get, get paid, paid to talk about bike racing, which um, I'm very privileged and lucky to do. And I don't take it for granted. So, yeah, it's good. Um, it hurts a little less. Uh, as well, so yeah, um, true. you don't need to bounce yeah, off anything, do you? Yeah. So, I was just no, coming out of the Queens last night. It's a, it's a good one. It's a good <laughs> one. Yeah. No, let's not talk about that. I was home early, mate. I, I was. I finished early last night. What time did you finish? Can't remember. <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> the, um, you, you mentioned Davy Todd earlier on. It, it's almost like we've got a, a Davy Todd fan club. We're talking to Chris Pritchard on uh, a previous show, and it, he's. He's been the rider that's impressed him the most um, in TT Fortnite so far. The t knowing the backstory of that podium, and I, I didn't want to approach him with it on the show that we did um, a couple of days ago, because I didn't want to take away from the fact of, of he couldn't put into words what he'd done. He struggled to be in the moment because it was again, it's the, the emotion of the whole place. But after what happened to his best mate, Daley Matheson, back in 2019, they were Butch and Sundance. They were so close. For him to then come here and do that and get it on the podium, which Daley never managed to do. One of them was always going to do it. We didn't know which one. Daley won't ever get the chance. But to see Davey up there and knowing that backstory, it's that emotion again. It's there. Yeah, it's yeah, everywhere it you is. go. Yeah, it is. Um that story is incredible, um, and you could see the emotion in Davy as well. I think there's been an awful lot of pressure on the shoulders of Davy coming into this TT um, because of how he had ridden in his second TT in 2019, and obviously COVID stopped everything. Had we not had the, pa the break for COVID, we'd probably be talking about Davy Todd, multi-winner of a TT by now. But there's a lot of pressure on his shoulders coming into this because of what he's been doing at short circuit level because of what he's done at the Northwest as well. Uh, but it was, it, it, yeah, that's, that's a proper story. Also, people might not be aware, but Davey Todd had, uh, had never actually ridden a road-going motorcycle until 2015. First time, when he was 19, 20, something like that. Did you commentate on that? I did, the yeah. Thundersport? He turned up uh, with an orange bib on, and that championship at Thundersport was competitive. If you won that, then you went on to do BSB and things like that. Um, that championship had Harry Truelove, um, Lewis Rollo, uh, so Neat many boys. names. Milo Ward. Mil yeah. Uh, yeah um, Tim and Rob Tom. Rob Hudson, Tim and Tom Neve. And Davy Todd turns up um, with this stock 600 with his orange bib on. And um, yeah, just started smoking everyone. He was incredible. And he was, well, we were talking about it the other day and he was saying that he actually started getting some needle from other riders because after three rounds, he was picking up trophies and winning and they were like, you're no novice, this is a hustle. Um, but he was genuinely a novice. And so I do, I do think that that's incredible. First time he's ever been on a motorcycle, 2015, seven years later, he's won his first TT and arguably it would have come sooner. So yeah, great story. What, who's as well as, as Davey and, and we know there's been a couple of other riders some young riders really come into the fore that you've, you've had the privilege to commentate and bring them home um, for their personal best laps who, who, who's been your standout riders over this TT so far um, beyond the obvious Glenn Irwin's ride in the superbike was unbelievable I mean 129 mile an hour lap in, in your debut the fastest ever newcomer lap that's, uh, that's insane. He's got some serious, serious talent. 
We knew that already yeah. from Short Circuit and Northwest, but it's a different ball game. Um, so that was impressive. Um, a lot of the rookies actually did very well. James Hind, he's gonna he's, he's done a great job. Uh, he's gonna be a, a big name for years to come. Dean Harrison, um, sorry, not Dean, Nathan. Nathan. Um, Nathan again commentated on him as a super team. Believe it or not, he was started super team racing with um, Brad Peary and Zach Corduroy and the like. Um, so that's been great. He's gone fantastically well. Joe Lachlan, I think, has done a, a, a good job as well, the Irish lad. Um, Milo Ward. That's a story. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah that is incredible. Um, Milo is just so infectious. He's got such an infectious personality as well. Um, that, is, that is amazing, and he is buzzing. I mean, he, he told me, um, and I think I said this on radio, he told me that after his first lap, he came in and he'd lost his voice from screaming. And I said, oh, what, in, you know, in celebration? He was like, no, actually, on the lap. <laughs> he said that he was going around parts of the course just going, woo <laughs> you know, that's, And that's Milo. You so. wonder if that's happening in people's helmets, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you do. I mean, that, I'm not sure we'd be able to air some of the stuff that said if we had a, you know, we could, we could hear it. But it would be funny if you could hear Milo going around the whole course. Just uh, He's that type of character. Howling so. his way around. Yeah, yeah. You, you come from a Thundersport background. Your dad was a major part of th uh, Thundersport GB. You started your commentary career there. So you, you know a lot of these riders coming through. So has that made your job a little bit easier here? Or with the nature of what they do, does it make you sort of go, ooh, this is different? Do you know uh, what I mean? Because yeah. you know what comes with the TT. It's, it's yeah. a difficult place to come. It's it's got, it's got different emotions for me. It's, it's handy in terms of not having to do as much research on them because I already know them. But at the same time, I see some of them as my mates and that then takes on a whole different meaning when you're at a, an Isle of Man TT races. So um, I feel like I've been going around sort of patting people on the shoulder a bit and there's some young lads that I've commentated on since they were tiny and um, I have, you know, I genuinely care for them. Um, so yeah, it's been different. When it comes to short circuit racing, it's easy. Because, you know, Chrissy Rouse, for example, I, you know, I can just go up to him and just say whatever I want at a short circuit event. But when it comes to roads, everything's different. But yeah, it's cool to, to kind of come into a paddock and maybe only not know 20%. It's, it, but it's a good learning curve, isn't it? Yeah, that's the thing. It, yeah. it's, it's stretching you as a commentator as well. It's not just the same um, paddocks every time. You've done MotoGP. You've done, you know most of the guys in BSB um, and your World Superbikes as well. So this was the last bastion for Steve Day commentator to move into the world of motorcycle racing. Yeah, I, it was, you know, to have done MotoGP, World Superbike, BSB now, and the TT, I've kind of ticked off quite a few there. But I'm loving doing the BSB at the moment. It's a brilliant championship, like a fantastic championship. Um, so close, very well organized, um, great atmosphere. Again, everyone's quite approachable as well. So yeah, loving it. The weird thing is that, that I found being in the assembly area up at the top, as you say, if you're at BSB, you walk past someone who's on the way out to the grid, you go, I right, might have a good one, yeah. see you when you get back. Yeah. Here, when you see people in the assembly area or you're on your way to the comms booth and the lads are getting ready to walk up an hour before they go out kind of thing, it's weird. It's just a wink and a thumbs up. It's the unsaid for this place. Yeah, it is. Because yeah. there's nothing you can say. No. no. It's the weirdest thing. There's so much can be said by saying nothing, which is weird on a yeah. podcast. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. And I've had to... Uh, fiddle my way through that a little bit over the couple of weeks as well because I think because I came from a short circuit orientated you know I went I came into it with that approach quickly realized this isn't the right approach um and yeah like you say just uh you know that's all it needs yeah a little thumbs up yeah um who's gonna win the senior tomorrow I think if everything goes to plan Peter Hickman will be very difficult to stop um I I look at him on the bike He's in so much control, and I feel like he's got more in the tank if he needs it. Uh, he does what he he does what he needs to win, and nothing more, because there's just no point in in taking any more risks because it's already risky enough as it is. But he looks just that little bit more in control. There are certain points around the course where he's just so much stronger than everyone else. So I think on paper he has to start as as a as sort of the bookie's favourite. 
nothing pointed at the organisers. It, it is what it is because of the delays that we have um, yesterday and today as it's tipping down outside. To be fair, we're, we're like 150 yards away from the grandstand and, and from the main tower and we can barely see it. it the rain and the mist has come in. Um, are you a little bit disappointed that the seniors only four laps? Yeah, um, I am. But yeah, personally, I, I, because I, it's the blue ribbon race. Yes, it, 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 it is. I am a little bit, but then you know you can't. What you can't control, you know what what we what are we supposed to do? And and you know the guys and organisers are just trying to get the races out. So I do understand why they've done it. That's um, why I wasn't being pointed. Yeah, at exactly. It's just, yeah, it's no, one of those I, things. I'm disappointed. Of course, yeah. The super, the TT senior, you want it to be six laps. You want there to be two pit stops. I would imagine the riders probably all feel the same as well. If you're going to win a senior TT, you want it to be the six laps. But, you know, you'd rather do a four-lap senior TT than none at all. Um, and who knows what's going to happen over the weekend. I mean, you know, it's difficult to know what the weather's going to do here. It could be sunny here um, in Douglas Bay. It could be tipping down in the mountain. So we'll see how we get on. We've obviously got that Saturday as a contingency as well you never know we might end up having you know a six lap senior on saturday that's going to be a dash for the boat yeah well yeah it would be yeah <laughs> um but i don't know um yeah a bit disappointed because i'd love to see a six lapper but equally um I i'm not gonna lose any sleep over it no. yeah something's better than nothing at yeah 100 percent yeah. um, moving on to the weekend after we continue the the the, uh, the steamroller continues mate we're off to knock hill what are you what are your thoughts on knock well hill? i'm looking mean, forward to heading north of hadrian's wall i've not been to knock hill since 2003 so uh, it'll be my first visit there yeah we can't then. discuss the reasons why you haven't been back since 2003. Um, but it's going to be a bit unusual especially the weekend after having yeah. commentated on uh, a tt where everything is just so different and you've got plenty of time to talk about uh, certain subjects 37 and three quarter miles, replace that with a, a, a circuit that's not that much past 37 seconds. Um, it's going to be odd. So I'm going to have to be a bit quicker with my words, I think, when we get there. But I'm looking forward to it. Um, the BSB is starting to take shape in terms of the championship at the moment. And there's, you know, there's this real feeling this year as well that there's new kids on the block, um, which is exciting. And there's lots of narratives and stories going into it. So, you know what? In a way, it's probably a good thing that we go there straight away. Because, you know, I've heard about these TT blues when you leave and, you know, you want to go back and stuff like that. Whereas, you know, I'm going to get home. Um, my wife is probably going to promptly pass me my son <laughs> and say, you can deal with him now for a couple of days. And then we're off to knock hill. So, yeah. The, the championships, it, it is starting to unfold, isn't it? The young guns are incredible. The pace is so hot this mm. year. Um, with Brad Ray, Kyle Ride, um, Lee Bob Jackson and Rory Skinner. Rory Skinner hat-trick? No, I'm not going to say that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I have nothing against Rory. Get along with him really, really well. He may well be the favourite because he did so well there last year on the FS3 Kawasaki, but... Other riders have taken massive leaps forward since then. You know, we all know how strong Danny Buchan is there. Um, you know, the two, uh, the, the, your two boys, you know, the Rich Energy, OMG Racing riders, uh, Brad and Kyle, they're going to be there every single weekend. They're stronger. The Yamaha's great. O'Halloran had a confidence boost in result. That was an incredible weekend yeah. for, um, for Jason. At Donington. So, Yamaha yeah, and, and, and Lee himself, honestly, Lee, the, the confidence that he will have taken from not just the win at Alton, but really solid performances at Donington as well. That's a different rider right and now. And it's about time. We were talking to him last night, weren't we, with, um, with Gary and Uncle Lee, of how Lee Bob's progressed this season. And he's taken that leap forward with the Kawasaki. Yeah. And he's now the rider we all knew he was capable yeah, exactly. of being. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, he's always had it. It's just about, you know, getting it out there. And I do think that there's been a sense of relief that, you know, the monkey's off the back now with that victory. Um, I really, I've got a lot of time for both Lee and Rory. They're, they're fantastic talents. Um, you know, I'm not 100% sure at the start of the season, I was convinced that they'd be able to fight for the championship. I thought they'd be there every now and again, but I might have to retract that. Um, they're going to be there the whole year. There's no doubt. So it's going to be exciting, but no, I can't call it. I, I, I won't call it at all. I don't think it's... Uh, I don't think it's odds on. I think a lot of people think that because Rory's from Scotland as well, that it's just sort of nailed on. And yeah, he's run a few laps at Knock Hill, but 
it's, the competition is going to be pretty hot. Three rounds into BSB from a commentary point of view. How are you finding it? Do you feel that it's your commentary now? No, not yet. I, I don't think that. Um, I love working with those guys and girls. I've worked with them before. Um, so I know them, which has been really handy. Socially, they're a fantastic bunch. Uh, we get along really well on air, off air. There's a lot of Mickey taking. Um, but I don't f quite feel like it's at home yet. Okay. Three rounds. We're, I feel like I'm getting there. But three rounds just isn't quite enough yet to just kind of feel comfortable. Um, I'm loving it. It's great. Obviously, working with James Whittam, Hayden, Shaky, Matt, Rachel. Um, you know, it, it's fantastic. My old buddy Greg Haynes, of course, as well. Um, so it's good. But yeah, not quite what I would say firing on all cylinders yet. And that's not from me not doing my job. That's just from a... There's a couple of things I want to do just to take it to that next level. The difficulty on the flip side of that is you now need to wait 12 months after tomorrow to come and do this. Yeah, again. I know. It's like the lap, isn't it? You wait 37 miles for them to come all the way around again. If they have to make a mistake on circuit, they go all the way around. You now have to wait 50 weeks before you get to do this again. Yeah, but I, I mean, yeah, I, li listen, we'll, we'll probably speak again later in the year and I'll have the TT Blues. Um, it's going to be weird because it is a long couple of weeks. It's really intense, but it's been thoroughly enjoyable. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know how I'm going to feel, actually, but I'm sure I'll be missing it. That's for sure. But, ha, you know, I've, I'm lucky I've got BSB. Um, I'll have some other projects in the winter as well. And then you know what it's like once that new year rolls around, um, things start moving pretty quickly. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure 50 weeks will go quicker than you think. And here we are on the 11th of June, because that yeah. feels like how long we've been Yeah, here. I know, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Steve Day, I wish you all the very best for the final day tomorrow. Thanks, You've got a busy one with the, the Supersport, the sidecar and the senior. And uh, we'll see you at Knock Hill next Friday. But congratulations on your first TT of commentary. Thanks, Dave. Cheers, mate.